So I'm a new media artist, uh, and the way I make my work is by writing code to make art. And I'm part of um, a small but growing community of other artists who also have this kind of double mindset where we've got one foot in the arts and one foot in computer science and other kinds of computational technologies. And it's a real challenge to put these together in a way where you can create poetic work uh, using this very brittle and highly technical medium. And I, I really feel that the needs of artists have been incredibly poorly addressed by the commercial space. And so there aren't tools that people can just buy in order to make interactive art, computational design, information visualization. And a really important thing that's happened over the last 10 to 15 years is that artists and designers who are able to code have taken this matter into their own hands and sort of lofted by the open source movement in software, they've created arts engineering toolkits which allow themselves and other artists and designers in order to make interactive art and computational design on the web and installations all around the world. The toolkits that, are the, 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 that they make, the toolkits that they make, which are things like processing, open frameworks, and P5.js, which you've started, um, are free open source toolkits that are made for artists by artists, but the number of people who maintain or who create and maintain these toolkits is incredibly small, even though the number of people who use them is large and sometimes numbering in the, in the, in the tens or even hundreds of thousands. So they're very vulnerable. Um, and any amount of support that we can do to bolster the strength of these arts engineering toolkits, these free open source toolkits that help people make art, okay, you know, has a huge impact. Um, and every dollar spent on supporting these tools um, goes back into the commons and into you know the 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 population of new media artists a hundredfold. You know, every hour that you guys upstairs spend on on this kind of stuff will will enable thousands more people to make new new work. So it's a huge multiplier effect by by addressing these things. So at the Frank Ratchy Studio for Creative Inquiry, um, we have artist residency programs, and we invite artists to come in. In fact, you were one of them. You you came, Art Lauren, and created a project called People Keeper uh, with Kyle McDonald. And um, it's great when we can invite artists to come in and make a project that they've never been able to make before with support like that. Um, but for about the same cost that it took to to invite you to come to the studio and make that great project, we can also invite 30 people to come work on P5.js and suddenly this toolkit that you've made to help art other artists in the world can actually help thousands of more people in a whole you know, sophisticated level of new ways. Um, and so I feel like what we're doing right now is giving a residency not just to you know, one artist or not even to 30, but more like 30,000. I've hosted um, developer conferences before and they're really important as I said because they help these toolkits, which are free and open source, but as a result of that, fairly vulnerable, really kick it up to the next level, as you said, and and um, and support the arts community uh, in a in a better way, usually technically. And those kinds of events, they often involve people kind of writing code and adding features and fixing bugs and you know, ripping out stuff and putting new stuff in and connecting libraries. And that's all good and really important. But I'm really impressed by this particular. Um, contributors conference that you've organized because it has had such, such a strong emphasis on enhancing the diversity and um, the needs of a learning audience of, of a, an audience that's maybe underserved and underreached so the initiative that's going on upstairs for example to translate the documentation into Spanish that's huge um, the initiative that's going on upstairs to um, uh, to create a code of conduct uh, and, and a kind of a community statement that's re that's respective very explicitly of diverse people is I think really important and kind of kind of unique um, and really respects the the idea that that this is an environment for um, people who have been underserved by the philosophies that have structured computer science for so long and also by the commercial, the, the commerce and commercial structures that have structured tools like this for so long. Uh, now it's really about reaching out to artists, to reaching out to people who speak other languages, reaching out to people who are differently able, reaching out to people who are in underserved communities economically, and helping them um, use what is fundamentally, you know, the, the key medium of 21st century culture. The Studio for Creative Inquiry is a weird organism. Um, 
we have a number of different missions and objectives. Uh, ultimately, we have to serve Carnegie Mellon um, uh, and our students, for example. So it's, it's a tremendous opportunity and, and fantastic advantage for, for my students to be able to spend an intensive week getting totally upskilled in open source you know, software development and arts engineering. This is fantastic for them. And although it's a small group of students, about five of them, some undergrads and some grads, um, uh, they're having such an intense immersion and apprenticeship that they're, and they're also making connections that are going to go with them, you know, for their whole lives. Um, they're meeting so many people from so many different places that it's a it's a it's a huge benefit to them. The the studio, as I said, exists ultimately to serve Carnegie Mellon to make Carnegie Mellon a more interesting place. My objectives as director of the studio are to use the studio as an instrument um, to help Carnegie Mellon by helping the world, um, and so by bringing in the P5JS community and you know allowing this important arts engineering toolkit which is used by thousands of people um, as an instrument for educating my local community about these kinds of themes and ideas and about my and educating my students about these kinds of themes and ideas then we really we really um, help a lot of people simultaneously yeah I'm really f happy for my students that get to participate it's it's really great for them to, to be a part of this sausage making